Steve, okay. do you want to? What you read? Is I rebalance? So exhausted. What you read? Steve, get me on his right, call. You say read. Is I rebalance? Hit me. Hold on. Let me double check. Uh... Uh, participants. Okay, Joe, you're a co-host. Okay. Uh, let's, uh, got 44. See, online now uh so we'll get started uh with the uh pledge of allegiance i pledge allegiance to the flag of the united states of america and to the republic for which it stands one nation under god indivisible with liberty and justice for all let us uh take a few moments to reflect on uh, and hopefully this uh, we can control this pandemic. COVID uh, looks like a little upsurge uh, in cases. Uh, I think that was going to be expected with the start of school, but uh, I think it also reflects the fact that uh, people are not uh, being careful and uh, masking up and uh, not keeping social distancing. It's still, you know, with us. We still have to be vigilant, especially, you know, our group. And also let's, let's pray that people come to their senses and stop, you know, this rioting, uh, it's not, demonstrations, peaceful demonstrations, they're out and out riots uh, in some cases that uh, we don't need that along with the uh, COVID. So let's take a moment and somehow pray or however you want to reflect on it. It just comes to an end. Uh, I read in the paper that Herb Kahn uh, passed away. I think Herb joined us for a short time, and I thought he was still a member, but uh, he wasn't. Uh, if anybody knew him, uh, very unique gentleman. And uh, that being said, uh, we had our board meeting last uh, Thursday, and there was uh, quite a bit of discussion on a, a number of issues, but because of our not meeting at the uh, church and because we did not have any other uh, outlays of cash, uh, we'll, we found ourselves uh, to be in a fairly decent situation going through the end of the year. We don't really expect any other uh, major uh, expenses. So uh, with the thought that we will be probably for the better part of the first half of next year also, uh, meeting uh, long distance, uh, the board decided that we really didn't need to build up our coffers uh, at the expense of the members. So uh, the COVID rebate from the Senior Men's Association is that the dues for next year are going to be $30 instead of the $60. Uh, and that should uh, keep us uh, even if uh, 
if we start up in the, the second half of the year. So uh, I say Congress couldn't decide uh, to continue any COVID rebates, but uh, your board of directors just made a decision to reduce the dues to thirty dollars. So that's an, another incentive to uh, try and get new members, uh, discounted rate, and uh, to see what we can do. So put a push on uh, to get new members, and the more members we get uh, in that. Uh, Thirty dollars. Uh, every new member that you bring in makes your dues the equivalent of sixty dollars, so to speak. So keep that in mind uh, as we continue. And uh, again, twenty twenty. Uh, any new members coming in in twenty twenty are exempt from dues. Uh, we also decided. Uh, to make another donation to the First Presbyterian Church, the Fish Church. Uh, they've been keeping us uh, in the loop uh, through Phil, uh, who's the resident rabbi of the uh, First Presbyterian Church. <laughs> and, uh, <coughs> Phil, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, when they did the calculation with the space, uh, using uh, social distancing, uh, they were only going to be able to put what 45 people in there. Is that 40? 40. 40 people. So, uh, without tables, without the tables. So that that's just you know maximizing the space for people. So, based on that, <clears throat> it, it looks like for the time being, uh, we will be. Uh, meeting online and uh, it also appears that they do want us uh, as a uh, group at their uh, church in when things change so we've decided to continue and help support them because their funding is down uh, they're having a major uh, capital improvement uh, so we're going to contribute to that uh, and that was a, a sum of five hundred dollars. Uh, the songster director, uh, uh, Margie, uh, is uh, you know our our, our you know our our uh, contract with her expired in in uh, July, but we do still want her back. The songsters. Uh, have made a donation on their own. And we decided that as the organization, uh, sponsoring organization, that we would also uh, help her out. And we made another $500 donation uh, to Margie. Uh, and if you've followed anything in the news, uh, musicians, performers, artists are really uh, hurt. Uh, you know, they're independent and I don't think they were able to get uh, unemployment and PPP, whatever. So uh, we decided to help her. She's been good with us. So uh, with that, uh, those are the uh, three major, major items that the uh, board of directors decided on uh, last week. Uh, Plus the Volunteer Recognition Award. Carl. What's the question? Oh, uh, you were going to do the announcing of the VRA? Oh, OK. I wasn't sure. Yes, um, the, the board um, met and discussed many uh, many possibilities and uh, in view of the uh, Joe stepping in for John uh, I guess even before the COVID-19 interruption as well as discharging his duties very well as uh, first VP of programs uh, Joe is being recognized uh, with the volunteer recognition award for 2020. Uh, Steve Fisher is the second recipient and uh, Steve who's always busy with our activities as the uh, the, uh, the database coordinator and uh, 
support for us. This year he's had even a, a greater burden because he's been organizing and coordinating the Zoom meetings, which in many cases has included instructing members on how to access Zoom and uh, providing uh, encouragement to people to participate in our meetings. So Steve and uh, Joe are two, uh, two VRA winners for uh, 2020. Thanks to both of them. And I'd like to thank you for um, the honor that uh, you've given to me. And Steve, do you want to? No, no. <laughs> Make it short. <laughs> yeah. Okay, our speaker today, uh, we couldn't get him last year for his commitments, and uh, we finally were able to get him. I uh, came highly recommended with a uh, very informative uh, talk is uh, Kevin Gutsman, a professor of history at WestCon, and his talk on Thomas uh, Jefferson. Uh, a revolutionary, a radical struggle to remake America. I guess uh, 250 years ago, uh, the country was still faced with trying to be remade. Uh, so that uh, he's spoken at a number of the uh, sister groups in the area and uh, very well received. So it should be a very interesting uh, I talk this after in another hour or so. Uh, kicking off the uh, Major League playoffs, which the Yankees uh, have clinched a spot. Uh, so if you're a Yankee fan, that uh, is good. And uh, hopefully they're, they're on the plus side of the... Uh, best of series because either they're going to win 12 nothing or they're going to lose 12 nothing. I don't know. There's nothing in between. Uh, but Granville Burgess is going to kick off that uh, playoff season with his uh, stories on Shoeless Joe Jackson, uh, who was uh, made infamous in the uh, nine, you know, 2019 uh, World series uh, scandal. Uh, we got Dr. Robert Shapiro, uh, PhD, Carl's uh, brother, uh, professor, uh, be talking about the arithmetic of the 2020 presidential election. Uh, Dudley Williams, who's the uh, been very active in the, in Stanford, uh, various boards, was uh, Man of the Year uh, last year, uh, and his talk will be on the nonprofit community's response to Black Lives Matter. And uh, on October, uh, Roman, uh, our, our world traveler. Uh, I've been to uh, Sri Lanka and he's got uh, some great photos as he always does and stories about Sri Lanka. That should be another interesting uh, meeting. Okay, uh, Ira. Um, I trust everybody's received a copy of last week's minutes. We had an online attendance of 65. Hopefully we'll see that going up now that we're into the fall. But um, considering all things, I guess that's pretty good. Anyway, if there are no uh, corrections or additions to the minutes, um, will our president cast one vote for all of us for acceptance? Okay, I haven't heard him. And I looked at him, and uh, they considered him accepted. Thank you, Ira. Okay. Okay. Uh um, nine o'clock discussion groups uh next week october 1st as we head into uh the new month uh lori price will be speaking on finance and note that the start time will be 9 a.m instead of 9 20. uh i guess lori feels uh, she's got a lot to say after being away for uh uh about three to four months so uh look forward to that 
October 8th, uh, Art Feldman, Intersectionality, Doctrine and Elections. And I'm sure Art will explain to us what intersectionality uh, means. October 15th, Bob Butke comes back on technology. And October 22nd, Joe D on current events. Um, hopefully Joe will uh, have his mic fixed by that time. Um, next slide, please. Uh, activities. Uh, Monday, October 5th, the fall golf outing is still on. I think there are seven teams. Brian, are you here today? Yes, I am. Yeah, it looks like we're going to have 26 or 27 golfers. Um, there's a reminder, when, please arrive and congregate about 7.15 and wear your mask at that point. Again, we're going to have one person per cart. Shotgun goes off at 7.45. It'll be a scramble the same as last year. And if there's anyone who is reluctant to commit, you have to commit now because we have to have our numbers in early next week. Howard, you got anything to add? Yeah, for those who haven't played before, um, there are cash prizes. First prize is $20 per person. Second prize is $15 a person. Third prize is $10 a person. There's three skill prizes. On the 18th hole, it's the longest drive that, that lands in the fairway, has to be in the fairway. On the 15th hole, it's the closest drive that lands closest to the pin. And on the uh, ninth, there's a line drawn, and it's the closest drive in the fairway closest to the line. So uh, those are each worth $20 each. So uh, come out, join us. Have a good time. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Howie and Brian. Looking forward to it. And hopefully the weather will be nice. Uh, the annual tennis tournament has been canceled due to a lack of uh, participant signups. So uh, hopefully by next year, uh, more people will get in shape and get ready to sign up and play. Uh, Next slide, please. On Wednesday, October 7th, there'll be a walk at Cove Island Park uh, at 10 a.m. No reservations, just show up. Uh, wear your masks and social distancing. Uh, I've walked the park a lot of times with my wife. It's beautiful. That's lots of different areas to uh, peruse. And Carl will be leading the walk. <clears throat> uh, one other thing uh, I might mention for future walks, uh, Carl Shapiro has advised me that uh, uh, after November 1st, Odds Point in Old Greenwich is available and is open to non-Greenwich residents uh, for walking. And that's another uh, beautiful walk along the Sound and some of its Excuse me, Larry? Yes. Um Sorry to interrupt you, but I just learned yesterday that, that November 1st is still up in the air. They haven't decided because they feel that if the weather still is good, they may keep it lit beyond November 1. So it's still unclear whether November 1 is a hard hard date to open the public. So I just want to mention Someone that. gave Sorry. me a tip on the, uh, on Costco. Does anybody know if there's any restrictions on uh, non-residents in Costco? Well, Costco is part of Greenwich, so... Uh... It's, uh, it's governed by, I guess, Greenwich, uh, Greenwich um, rules. And rules. Yeah. Uh, there's no, there's no hope, uh, gate there, and uh, we've been there, and I can't remember when, but it was, uh, I can check on that and uh, let you know the next meeting. Okay, you can also just send, uh, send my, <clears throat> me and uh, copy Carl uh, by email. Sure. Okay. Okay. Uh, just a question, Larry, on the uh, Cove Island. Uh, if somebody uses those uh, rolling walkers, you know, the walkers that have the little seat, the roll, well, I don't know what they call them, rollabout walkers, uh, would that be accessible? Uh, as far as I know, um, 
the paths are all leveled. So uh, even though they're not all paved, uh, there's like, uh, uh, it's firm enough to uh, support a, uh, a scooter type uh, device. So uh, there's an inner loop that ha that's all paved and the outer loop shown here is the, is the gravel. Uh, it's gravel, so it's, it, it'll support a walker. Uh, or just take the inner loop, which is paved with asphalt, and there wouldn't be any problem yeah. there. All right, because I mean, some people might need that. Uh, all right, so everybody is uh, okay with 10 a.m., I guess. Uh, I'll have more details next week on where, where exactly we're going to meet, but uh, that, this is the basic idea. And Carl, well, uh, no same. problem about parking, because uh, that's part of the beach. Uh, yeah, not at end September for, uh, the end of September, the end of September. Okay. So uh, October first is open parking. Okay. Can I can I assume that that's co-ed? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. All right. Paul, I turn it over to you. No change in the the membership numbers this week. Um, as mentioned earlier by Joe, we'll be collecting dues of, of thirty dollars, but I won't be I won't start collecting dues until until November. Um, in the past, we've started October, and it just drags it out a bit. So uh, we'll just start in start in November with reminders, and uh, at that point, I'll give you uh, an address to mail the checks to, and uh, we'll start the collection process. I, I have a question while I've got everybody on board. Um, I receive. I'd say a couple times a month, a few times a month, I get requests for uh, updated uh, members' contacts, that is emails and phone numbers. And I was wondering uh, if anybody has any objections or any uh, comments on the, my idea of, of putting it in the members only section of the website. So that every time I update it, and I just got another update yesterday, um, that I can, I can always have a, const, a constantly updated version available to members and they don't have to contact me and uh, you know, go through that difficulty. So it, it, does anybody see any problems with putting it in the members only section? I think that's the easiest and most efficient way of doing it. So okay. it should work out well. I'll work it out with Steve then, thank you. Thank you, Carl. Fellowship Director Phil. Hi, uh, nothing has been reported to me this week, so if anybody has any news to share, this is a good moment to do it. Do we, anybody know about anybody who uh, got good news or not so good news? As I said last week, no news is generally good news these days. <laughs> uh, Joe, you said Herb Kahn passed away. Uh, where did you see that? And the, uh, I believe it was yesterday's advocate. I see. Yeah, that's correct. I saw it. Yeah, I, I think he was a member with us for joined at one point and uh, then may have not continued. Uh, he came to meetings, uh, I think, last year. Yeah. Now, this is not Herb Kahn, this is Herb Cohn who owned uh, Comar Furniture. Oh. Yeah, yeah uh, Cone, K-O-H-N. Did I mispronounce it? No, there's a uh, Herb Kahn that belonged, K-A-H-A-N, oh, yeah. um, that um, Larry's referring to. Oh, uh, no, this is Her Herb Cohn, who came to some meetings also. Oh, okay. Thanks, Dick, because uh, I thought it was Herb Kahn. All right, uh, Dick Harper. Well, we've got a long book. I'm going to have to try to uh, abridge it a little bit and send people which uh, chapters are going to be best about the uh, <clears throat> Lewis and Clark Undaunted Courage. Ambrose, of course, is a good writer. So um, that's what we're going to do on the 28th of October. Thank you, Dick. Well. Okay. Uh, Dick Fisher. Dick Fisher. Yeah. 
the Alzheimer's Association will again hold its uh, walk to end Alzheimer's and it will be on October 11th. It will not be at Calf Pasture Beach in Norwalk as it has been in the past 20 some years. It'll be around your neighborhood or at the Cove or wherever you want to do it. Uh, at 10 o'clock, uh, if you want to participate, there will be a virtual opening ceremony and they have, uh, there is a ceremony with uh, uh, flags that you can uh, put up for people that you know who have Alzheimer's, who have died of Alzheimer's. It's called the Promise Garden. That'll be done virtually. So that if you uh, want to join uh, my team or would like to make contributions uh, in the white part of the poster that you're seeing up, there is a link to my birthday team because my birthday's around that time. And uh, the contributions go not to my name. It may go to my name, but it goes for the benefit of the Alzheimer's Association. I would like to say that uh, with everything with COVID-19, it, uh, the uh, Alzheimer's Association is, and their uh, 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 work is kind of lost in the cloud, so to speak. But uh, last month, or maybe it was two months ago, they had their uh, normal international uh, scientific meeting virtually with 30,000 scientists from all over the world contributing. And uh, that kind of, uh, that's sponsored by the Alzheimer's Association. And that kind of interface uh, hopefully will lead to uh, some discoveries. So whether we'll ever get to end Alzheimer's, we certainly hope. So thank you. All right. Are there uh, any items uh, for discussion? Yeah, I'm, I'm Larry here. Um, I drive past the uh, North Stamford Reservoir, uh, and it is really sadly, sadly low. Um, and yet, I've, I've not seen any major discussion about the water shortages in Stamford. I've seen one sign on Newfield Avenue, uh, one of those electronic signs. But I remember a couple of years ago, there were pipes laid to bring water here for, from uh, Bridgeport, et cetera, you know, along the Merritt Parkway and uh, in a variety of places. And yet there's been not, no discussion hardly at all about the lack of water uh, currently. Has anybody seen anything or anybody have anything to add to that? I can yes. add to the fact that those pipes what were temporary have been permanently installed so that uh, the water from uh, is it Monroe or Trumbull Reservoir can, uh, can now flow into the Stanford Reservoir. Well, apparently it's not doing a very good job because uh, there's hardly any water in the uh, in the reservoir, the North Stanford Reservoir. Call the water company and ask them. Uh, a couple of months ago, Aquarian did make a notice that the uh, that there was a deficit in rainfall this spring, and asked people to kind of restrict their uh, watering of their lawns because apparently that's the biggest <coughs> contributor of uh, water usage during the summer. And Stanford does a better job of controlling that than Greenwich. Because as we know from the Aquarian person who came to us, oh, I think last year or two years ago. And but, but it is a severe deficit of water and can't replace uh, rainfall because apparently 
re recycling of water and and or uh, desalinization is just too expensive and we're not set up for it. And, and so that's off the table. And that's probably the real answer to our chronic water shortages. The one thing I heard uh, was although we, you know, haven't had much rain and, you know, resupply, uh, seasonally this time of the year, it does normally get low, uh, but there wasn't a major concern about the, the levels. So this was on the news, one of the news stations, uh, this was last week. Uh, one thing I didn't mention, uh, I don't know, Bob, Luke, uh, is heading up our uh, nomination of officers uh, for the uh, upcoming year. Bob, do you have anything uh, you want to say about that? Uh, yes, um, we have um, a meeting scheduled following this meeting today um, with the committee, which includes Joe Racanello, Ed Roloff, Phil Schichter, Carl uh, Funk, and uh, myself. John Cullen is also on the committee, but I got a phone call from him this morning saying he had um, three, tooth, three teeth extracted yesterday. So he, John's had his problems. So he will not be a part of our meeting today, but we're going to uh, uh, talk about um, nominations for 2021. And um, we'll be more forthcoming from that as we get into October. Uh, we have plenty of time and according to the articles, um, we, I think by the last week of October, uh, the last regular meeting in October, um, we will uh, present the complete slate at that point in time. And then the election will be made by majority vote at the week before Thanksgiving weekend, or before that regular meeting in Thanksgiving. Um, and then of course, those officers and directors will assume their duties on January 1st at the following the annual meeting. And uh, the mayor normally uh, swears them in, so I'm assuming we'll arrange that. Um, so everything's going pretty well there. I think we've got uh, um, quite a few people that are interested in serving on the board. If anyone is, as I mentioned last week, uh, make sure you uh, notify myself or Carl or one of the other members of the committee so that we can um, uh, find out what your interests are. We have a lot of people out there that are very uh, uh, good and have participated in the past. And if you want to serve, uh, please come forward. Uh, otherwise, you have to rely on us to uh, to uh, work through the process. We will be contacting people uh, over the next several weeks. I think that's pretty much it, unless anybody has any questions. Hi, right, thanks, Bob. Okay, Joe. And uh, the other thing that uh, went on at the uh, board meeting, uh, we discussed the schedule of the songsters, uh, and as I had sort of indicated, uh, and if I'm you know miss anything, Jerry, you know, let me know. There is not going to be any activity with the songsters mm -hmm. uh, for the foreseeable future uh, for a couple of reasons. One, there's no place to practice and rehearse and there's none of the places that they would be performing at uh, are open uh, to outside visitors still at this time because of COVID. So uh, their season uh, is at a standstill. <laughs> that right, Jer? That is correct. Okay, thank you. Okay, I see Lloyd's got his hand up. Oh, do I still? Uh, no, I, I, I just have to. I had it before I heard it talk. Okay. Bill Johnson. Yeah, I just wanted to comment on uh, an article in The Advocate two days ago. I hope everybody saw that uh, Benadryl uh, may have uh, an effect um, uh, causing uh, dementia. And um, we're coming into the allergy season, so if you're taking an antihistamine, uh, talk to your doctor about it, would you? Thank you, Bill. 
Okay. Uh, if there are no other items of discussion, any uh, anybody have any uh, stories or? I got a joke. Okay, Dick Fisher. I'm on twice today, I guess. A couple both age 78 went to a sex therapist's office. The doctor asked, what can I do for you? The man said, will you watch us have sex? The doctor looked puzzled, but agreed. When the couple finished, the doctor said, there's nothing wrong with the way you have sex and charged them $50. This happened several weeks in a row. The couple would make an appointment, have sex with no problems, pay the doctor, then leave. Finally, the doctor asked, just exactly what are you trying to find out? We're trying, we're not trying to find out anything, the man replied. She's married and we can't go to her house. I'm married and we can't go to my house. The Holiday Inn charges $90. The Hilton charges $120. We do it here for $50 and I get $43 back from Medicare. <laughs> <laughs> okay, talk about Medicare. Everybody's got their books. Uh, and uh, we're trying to schedule. Uh, Christina Crane, as we do annually, to uh, fill us in on any changes in Medicare or the uh, supplemental uh, advantage and whatnot uh, plan. So uh, we're trying to get her in uh, in uh, either you know, October or early November. Sure, I believe our speaker has joined us. Yes, I see uh, Kevin I'm, is uh, with I'm us. Stop. And I'm stop uh, unless there are any other. Uh, Bill Johnson, are you got your hand raised again? Nope. Okay. Didn't mean to. Okay. Uh, Kevin. Where are you? 